Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. I say episode, what is it? Is it a reaction vid? Is it a cuss out? You decide. Either way, my name is Mashal St. Patrick here at one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Santoki is not with me today. This is a solo one, a quick, a quick, how long is this one going to be? Let's say 25 minutes. 26 minutes maximum, 30 minutes, no more than 30. So I'm going to watch that clock on the side, people. I had to do a reaction vid. You know why? Because the white ball squads were announced yesterday. I'm recording this on Wednesday, the 29th of June. The white ball squads were announced yesterday uh, for the T20s versus Bangladesh and the ODIs versus Bangladesh. It's immediately worth pointing out, of course, India come to the Caribbean as that Bangladesh white ball series finishes. So it hasn't been announced as to whether, in fact, let me just double check, you know, let me just double check as I'm doing this, people, let me make sure. Yeah, the squads that I'm going to talk through um, are just for the Bangladesh series. So it's not a double announcement for India as well. So things may change for that. And why did I feel like a reaction video was needed? One, I mean, why not if we're going to purport to be uh, a Caribbean cricket podcast, and we should up our content levels and make sure we're reacting to all the key news coming out of the Caribbean. But also earlier on today, I was present for the press conference with Dr. Desmond Hain, the, Haynes, the lead selector for the West Indies senior men's team. Um, and there was quite a lot of important things said in that press conference. If you follow us on Twitter, you can see it in the handle next to my name, at Carib Cricket. Hopefully you've already read through the kind of updated, you know how I do already. Whenever I go to the press conference, I kind of live tweet all the main talking points. So some of you listening to this may already have gone onto our um, our Twitter page and kind of read through the key headlines. But I'm going to I'm going to weave that into my reaction to the announcement of the ODI and T20 squads and kind of talk through the key the key points or the key debates uh, with this squad being announced. For those wondering about when are we going to do a reaction to the test series, Santoki and I are recording that tomorrow, so Thursday the 30th, to so look out for that to drop tomorrow. We haven't decided if that's live or if that's just going to be a recording, but stay tuned in our news channels, Twitter handles, Instagram handles to find out what we're doing with regards to that. As usual, just a bit of admin to get out of the way. Uh, you know by now, if you're a regular listener, you know by now, if you're a regular viewer, you know this by now. You can follow the Caribbean Cricket Podcast at Carib Cricket on Twitter and Instagram. We're also on Facebook. Just search Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, we're on YouTube. If you are watching this video, press the like button, press the subscribe button, share this with anybody who you know has an interest in uh, West Indies cricket. And if you feel this is a good enough medium, share it with them, get them to follow us. Let's up the subscriber levels. I think we're currently on 2,472 subscribers. Big up all the subscribers. I think what I'm supposed to do is like put some kind of um, uh, ticker tape feed at the bottom going road to 3K. I think that's what like these content people do. Like you you talk about your road to the next level. Okay, road to 3K people. Share this with people. Inshallah, we'll get there one day. Um, you can support the Caribbean Cricket Podcast at www.patreon.com forward slash Caribbean Cricket. Uh, big up anybody who has become a patron in recent times. Um, if you're, you can support for two pounds, two dollars to whatever your currency is. And just to show your support for the podcast, if you want to become a five pound, five dollar, five, whatever, uh, patron, then that also gives you, um, uh, a percentage off our, our merchandise and things like that. We're down to our last six of the Caribbean cricket podcast hoodies. I really should have uploaded the, um, slide to show you that if you watch one of our last episodes um i i uploaded i uploaded the slide or the like there's the kind of image of the hoodie and then didn't realize that i muted myself so you lot would have just seen like two minutes of just the information with no one talking over that if i've got time at some point in this video i'll try to upload that slide again i just feel like i've already started so i can't do that but if you are interested basically 
if you're in the UK, 35 quid for the hoodies. Um, no extra for postage and packaging. If you're in, abroad anywhere, 45 quid, no extra for postage and packaging. You can go on our handles to find out what the hoodies look like. It's not as easy to tell on the screen, but if you want a live one, I always kind of do this now. If you want a live one, there you go. Those are the Caribbean Cricket. Ooh, oh, sorry. Those are the Caribbean Cricket Podcast hoodies. So if you want one, I don't know if the camera is showing it that well. It's much better than probably the camera is showing it. We're down to our last six. I think it's one large. I think it's one large, three extra large, and two double XL. So if any of those are your sizes, hit me up in the DMs, whatever, and you can get one of those as well. And of course, if all else fails, the one stop shop to find out everything about the, the podcast. Caribbean Cricket Podcast.com. Just go there and you can find all the links, the news, the podcast episodes, all the links to Spotify, Apple, so on and so forth, the link to our Substack um, page, Facebook page, all of those things. So that's the main website. Anyways, people, let's get into it. I said this was going to be no more than 30 minutes, which means I've basically got 25 minutes left to react to the ODI and T20 squad announcements. Let's start with where should we start? Do you know what? Let's start with the ODI team. Why? Because even though that's the... No, no, sorry, I should. Let's start with T20s because T20s is what's going to uh, start this weekend. So if you don't know um, already, let me just give you the schedule. Get into my bag here. Look at this. What podcast opens up their, their rucksack whilst they're, they're doing their live video? If I just get out my, uh, my diary, people. <laughs> it's my diary. I even put West Indies. I put West Indies fixtures in this diary, you know. Um, all the teams. So the first T20 will be this Saturday, the second. The th second T20 will be this Sunday, the 3rd of July. And the final T20 will be Thursday, the 7th of July. The ODIs, the first one will be the 10th of July. The second one will be Wednesday, the 13th of July. And the final ODI will be Saturday, the 16th of July. And then the India ones begin literally a week later. So given that the T20 is the first ones up, let's look at the T20 squad. So this was the named T20 squad on the screen below. You should see it. Nicholas Puran, captain. Rothman Powell, vice captain. Shamar Brooks, Akil Hussain, Alzari Joseph, Brandon King, Carl Mayers, a return for Obed McCoy, a proper return for Kimo Paul, uh, Romario Shepard, Odin Smith, Devon Thomas, Hayden Walsh Jr. and the reserve is Dominic Drakes. So that's the squad. If you're watching this, obviously now, maybe put in the comments what you feel. You might want to wait to see what I say before you put in the comments what you feel. By now, if you're a regular of listening to our podcast, you know that I tend to reply to every single comment that is put on the YouTube pages. So if you want to engage in discussion about this, by all means, get involved in the comments below, as well as pressing the like button, the subscribe button, notification button, etc. So first things first, let's just talk about who's dropped from this squad. Um... And actually, not that many names have been dropped. So people might forget that the last time we put... No, there are a few names, sorry. Mixed up with the ODIs. People might forget that the last time we played T20s um, was actually in India back in, I want to say, February. So if you remember, we played England in January in a five-match T20 series and beat them 3-2. And then we went to India pretty much straight after that and lost 3-0 in India. Now, we have to remember, people, that the T20s are important. Remember, there is a World Cup at the end of this year in Australia. We have to qualify to get into the actual main draw of the World Cup. That's not guaranteed. Obviously, since the last time that T20 series has been played, Kyron Pollard, the T20 captain, has stood down. So we haven't actually played any T20s since Pollard stood down. So this will be Puran's first proper for a forage into being the official West Indies captain in this format of cricket. And I think people have forgotten that we haven't actually played T20s in a long time. Now, first things first, who are the names who are omitted from this T20 squad? Some dropped, some injured, and but I'm just going to go through them so that people can understand um, who is not around and identify by default who are the people who have replaced these players dropped from the T20s. So I've tried to match them up. So when we went to India, these players were in the squad. Roston Chase. And the joke is, Roston had a really good time 
in India, not with the bat, of course, but with the ball. He took six wickets uh, for 62 runs. Uh, the best economy in the team, 5.16, average of 10. Um, uh, sorry, average of 10 with the ball. Now, Roston has been dropped. There is an argument to say, there is an argument to say that that is harsh on Roston. If you look at the squad, you can see that there's actually only, no, there's two, there's, the, 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 there's two spinners in the squad, but Roston isn't one of them. So Akil Hussain is there and Hayden Walsh Jr. is there. Both Akil and Hayden went to India. Um, but Hayden only played one match. Roston played Roston played all three matches. Akil played two matches. Um, so there's an argument to say interesting. Interesting that they've kept Walsh and Hussain and the person who actually bowled best in terms of spin is out of the squad. So that's already an interesting talking point. Get in the comments below to let me know what you think about that. Remember, I study this stuff. Sheldon Cottrell, out. Now, in fairness to uh, Dr. Haynes, he said in the press conference today that Sheldon had been selected, but then got injured. So Sheldon isn't dropped. Sheldon is out because he is injured. If you look through that squad, the obvious light for light replacement for Sheldon is Obed McCoy. And that's a welcome return. You can debate in the comments below whether you think Obed McCoy or Sheldon Cottrell is the better left arm bowler. I would have them both. I know that some teams in international cricket seem to be averse to playing two left armers in a squad. No idea why, given we play so many right armers in the squad. But um, Sheldon can't play, so Obed is the natural replacement. It's good to have Obed back. I think sometimes people forget that, um, remember before last year's World Cup, Obed was on fire all through that summer series of whatever it was, 18 matches that we played. Obed was bowling brilliantly for the West Indies and then he got injured before the World Cup. Remember, Fabian got injured before the World Cup as well. Would that have meant we would have done better at the World Cup? Who knows? But losing Obed McCoy before last year's T20 World Cup was a huge blow. Fantastic to see him back selected for the Maroon. He's been on fire um, for Sussex in the, in the T20 blast in England. So a brilliant a welcome return for Obed McCoy. Kimo Paul is in this squad. Now, I think Kimo is in the squad as a direct replacement for Jason Holder. Remember that Jason Holder is currently being rested. So Jason, um, what cricket we played? Jason hasn't played, didn't play the um, Netherlands ODI tour. He didn't play the Pakistan ODI tour. He hasn't played the Bangladesh test series and he's not going to play anything in the Bangladesh white ball series. Re remember, I've got no issue with that. Remember that Jason is an all-format player and our calendar this year is chocker blocked Remember, after Bangladesh come India, okay? After India come New Zealand. After New Zealand come CPL. After CPL, we're travelling to Australia. I think we've got a tri-series in there somewhere and then we're travelling to Australia. Then it's the, sorry, no, no, sorry. After CPL, World Cup. Then we're travelling to Australia. Well, the World Cup's in Australia. We got test series in Australia, so the, the 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 calendar is chocker. It makes sense that given you're gonna basically have Jason in every single squad this summer, going all the way through to the T20 World Cup and then the test series in Australia, you're gonna have to rest Jason at some point. So it makes sense that Jason's not involved uh, versus Bangladesh. With with respect to Bangladesh, it makes sense not to involve Jason. So Kimo Paul is a light for light replacement. Again, in the press conference today, Dr. Haynes spoke uh, glowingly about how Kimo had performed in the four day championship for Guyana. Remember, people, that Kino, Kino, Kimo is coming back from injury and trying to re, re reach, but trying to get back to the levels we once saw from Kimo. What, remember, when Kimo first debuted for the West Indies, he was seen as a genuine, top quality, all round prospect, bat and ball. Kimo. Uh, bowled well in test cricket. He Kimo was an all-format player and injuries have taken their toll on Kimo over the last two years. But Kimo's hungry. I've seen some interviews with Kimo recently where he's hungry to get properly back into the West Indies squad and it makes sense to bring him back first and foremost in the white ball squads. Obviously, four-day cricket isn't white ball cricket. They called Kimo up as a kind of, what was it? Was it a... COVID heat replacement reserve player in Pakistan. He got to play the final um, ODI in Pakistan. So it's good to see Kimo back. He's the natural light for light replacement for Jason Holder. And of course, the other person who's not in this squad who was last involved in Western is, is Pollard. So Pollard is out. Um, and looking at this squad, I think that Devon Thomas is his replacement 
in the squad in terms of obviously, well, Devon actually does bowl, but I think Devon Thomas is, is is in there as the like for like batting replacement for Pollard. Obviously, some will say to will say, yeah, well, Brooks is in there as well. Brooks wasn't in the last um T20 tour to India. Um so uh, Brooks, let me just double check if Brooks was there. I don't think Brooks was there. So yeah, Brooks is in. Brooks is in as well. So you could say that maybe Brooks is there as a replacement for Pollard um as well. But yeah, so Brooks is in the T20 squad. I've got no issue with that and Devon Thomas is in the T20 squad. Devon remember his <laughs> Devon isn't Devon can do everything. He can bat, he can bowl. He can wicket keep and he's an excellent fielder. Anyone who saw his substitute catch in the recent second test match versus Bangladesh will know that he, he's, a, he's a gun in the field, a gun fielder as well. So Devon Thomas in, again, got no real issues with that. Dominic Drakes is the reserve. So Dominic Drakes, in when we played, when we went to India, was actually in the squad. So he's been pushed down to the reserve place. So that's where you get Brooks's name. So Brooks, who wasn't in that India squad, has possibly replaced Dominic Drakes, who is now just a reserve traveling with the squad. I'm not going to get into the semantics semantics of who should play versus Bangladesh in the first T20 on Saturday. Maybe that's a separate video. Maybe that's a debate for our Twitter handle, our Instagram handle. But this is just my quick kind of breakdown and synopsis of what the T20 squad is looking like and what the main talking points are. What am I worried about with this T20 squad? Boy... I'm still concerned. Well, there's... Hmm. Looking at that squad, it's, do you know what? It's a good squad. It's a good squad. But the things that stand out to me, and again, get in the comments after I've said this, the things that stand out to me is areas to... Is it be concerned about? Areas to question are there's too many all-rounders in that squad. I still think that we've become too much of a bits and pieces T20 side. That doesn't mean we can't be good with it. But for me, it's always about role definition. So if you look at that squad, Kimo Paul is an all-rounder. Romario Shepard is an all-rounder. Dean Smith is an, is an all-rounder, right? So that's already three all-rounders. Carl Mayers is an all-rounder. Technically, Akil Hussain is an all-rounder. But the difference with Carl Mayers and Akil Hussain is they're definitely playing. And you know that Carl Mayers is probably going to be somewhere near the top of the order possibly looking at that squad yeah looking at that squad you assume that Carl Mayers is possibly going to open with Brandon King that's what you assume just looking at that squad okay so and Akil Hussain we know is our premier spinner in the format and he's possibly going to be coming in well we don't know where he's going to come in it depends on match situation for Akil Hussain as to where they might bat him so then I start to look at Shepard Smith and Paul and I'm like okay Who's good enough in their strongest suit? Do I trust Kimo Paul with the ball in T20s? Yes, I do, actually. I know he had a rough time of it when he went to New Zealand a couple of years back, but remember about the injuries, okay? Of those three, I trust Kimo Paul with the ball more than I trust Romario, more than I trust Oldeen Smith. Who do I trust more with the bat? Well, boy, you could put Romario Shepard or Oldeen Smith anywhere there. It's a debate as to who's better as a finisher. At this point in time, I'd actually argue, I don't know, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. Look, you lot tell me in the comments who you'd trust more with the bat out of Shepard and Smith. But the point is, that's three all-rounders. Can you play all of those three in the same team? I think that's debatable. Because if you play all of those three in the same team, you're going to have to ask at least two of them to probably bowl their quota. And then you, if you're asking them that, so imagine I'm just randomly, Akil Hussain, fine, he bowls his four. Albert McCoy obviously plays, he bowls his four. That's eight overs, right? Um, let's assume Hayden Walsh doesn't get in, but he might do, but let's just assume he's not. Then you're looking at the next, so that's eight. You're looking at the remaining 12 overs coming from a combination of Mayers, Paul, Shepard Smith. Let's just assume they all play. Do you think we can get 12 competent overs from those four? One of those four is going to have to bowl more than you'd probably want them to. That's my argument. So when I look at, oh, I forgot Alzari Joseph. Sorry, take that back, people. Sorry, take that argument back. Alzari, Akil, Obed, that's 12 overs. So actually, sorry, my argument was redundant there. That's 12 of your overs gone. 
So then my argument is, if you've got 12 year olds from those three, and those three are all certainty. So I'll say that again, Akil, Alzari, Obed. 12 overs, which means you've got eight overs left to fill in, a, in, in obviously a T20. You don't need, if Carl Mayers is in your side, you don't need all those three all-rounders, Paul, Shepard, and Smith. One of those three has to sit. So the argument is, who are you sitting? Get in the comments below about who you're sitting. You might have to sit too, because some of you might get in the comments below and say, well, obviously Hayden Walsh should play as the other spinner, which means you're sitting two of those all-rounders. So I, my overall point, going back to it, is just I think we have too many all-rounders in the side. And too many of those three, too many all-rounders where you're not sure what they're, if they can fulfill their primary suit. And I always say about an all-rounder, if you can't fulfill your primary suit to a good enough level, how did you get in the squad to begin with? But then you might turn around to me as a listener to this and say, oh, but that, that's because you've got their primary suit wrong. Romario Shepard's primary suit isn't bowling. His primary suit is batting. I would say that's not the case. He's picked first and foremost to bowl, and he should be expected to bowl his three or four overs. And if you can't trust him to do that, don't put him in the side then. But anyways, that's a, that, I'm, la I'm leaving that out there. I'm leaving, I'm leaving that out there for people to get in the comments, debate, tell me I'm chatting foolishness, so on and so forth. There's obviously potential question marks about the batting, which maybe I'll address at a different time. Are there too many? Is it, It's T20, so I've got no issue with this. A lot of them in there are, are, are what are, on a good day, there are 140 plus batters, Puran, Powell, Mayers, Brandon on a good day. And then obviously you've got the Shepherds and the Smiths, depending on how you structure your order. So there's a lot to be said about how they're going to structure that T20 side. Does a Brooks definitely play in the T20 side? Is his nudging and nerd limb? He has shown that he's got the ability to go quickly, but will they play him as somebody everybody else bats around? I don't know. I've never believed in that concept in T20s, but they may think that Shamar Brooks' role is key in terms of having some, you know, how everyone wants to talk about the Marlon Samuels role. They may well decide that that's where Shamar Brooks comes in. Who knows? There's some debate around that. So that's the T20s. That's the T20s. Oh, sorry, I should say, let me just deal with some absences. So lots of people say, where's Fabian Allen? Fabian Allen was in India when we last went to India and didn't only played, no, he played two matches. He played two matches, um, went at 9.88. Remember, Fabian was coming back from injury for that India tour. So uh, Dr. Haynes said that Fabian had been selected, but due to uh, personal circumstances, and I can confirm that these are legit, serious personal circumstances, um, Fabian couldn't make himself available for selection. So that's why Fabian's not involved. Fabian hasn't fallen off the radar like we questioned. Um, he just couldn't make himself available for selection. Sheldon, like I said, is injured. <laughs> Hetmeyer has reported that he is injured. He told Cricket West Indies he's injured and therefore cannot be selected. I'm just going to throw this out there. I, I, I'm not denying that. I'm not saying he's not. I, I'd love to know what the injury is, though. Shimon hasn't played any cricket since he came back from the IPL. That doesn't mean he can't get injured. I'm just saying I'd love to know what the injury is. Is he saying that? Is he saying that since he came back from the IPL, he's picked up an injury? Or did he, is he saying that he got an injury in the IPL and he hasn't recovered from it yet? This is where we need to be a bit more transparent. Cricket West Indies can easily turn around and say, we don't need to say what Hetmeyer's injury is. They may not even know. Because all I can do is repeat what was said in the press conference. Hetmeyer notified Cricket West Indies that he's got he's be he's injured at current. He's being assessed by people who I hope from the Guyana Cricket Board, and he will let Cricket West Indies know when those injuries are over. So that's why Hetmeyer wasn't selected. Maybe we'll see Hetmeyer in the India series. Who knows? Uh, maybe we'll see him in the New Zealand series. Who knows? Either way, he's injured for Bangladesh. Evan Lewis. Boy, I better drink some water. I'm going to repeat what I heard in the press conference. Desmond Haynes, I asked the question in the press conference, and I apologize I haven't got the video to show people. It hasn't been sent to me yet, because I think this would be really, really good to show people um, what specifically was said. So I think I asked like the sixth or seventh question, maybe fifth or sixth question in the press conference. And up to that point, nobody had asked about Evan Lewis, which I thought was weird. I was like, surely that's the obvious question people should be asking here. So when uh, it was my turn to speak at the press conference, I said, uh, Dr. Haynes, 
Um, I know that you're someone who likes to have one-to-one -one conversations with players and find out their circumstances. So, for example, uh, Desmond had spoken with Nicholas Pura and re Red Bull Cricket. And if he's serious about it, cool. Dr. Haynes's response to me was, he had spoke, I'm just repeating verbatim, okay? Bit of paraphrasing, but verbatim in general. Dr. Haynes's response was, I have spoke, sorry, I spoke to Evan Lewis about two weeks ago. And I said to Evan, what's going on? Obviously, he would have heard that Evan fell fitness tested at it. Evan Lewis was told, again, I'm just repeating what I know. So if Evan's listening to this, Evan, you're welcome to come on the Caribbean Cricket Podcast and cuss out who you need to cuss out, cuss out me, cuss out Santoki, or cuss out Cricket West Indies. Cuss out whoever you need to cuss out. But this, I'm just repeating what I've been told. Evan was through his franchise, because Evan was injured before getting to IPL. Cricket West Indies organized through his franchise. Can't remember which one he played for now. Was it Gujarat? I can't remember. They he or luck now or something. He organized through his franchise for um Evans to take a fitness test. Dr. Haynes confirmed it was a 2K run test. So it wasn't it wasn't the, the bleep test or the yo-yo test. It was a 2K run. And evidently Evan was supposed to run a certain time. Evan did not complete the 2K run. It's unclear as to what reasons. That wasn't stated in the press conference. Evan did not complete the 2K run. Dr. Haynes then said that normal practice, if you don't complete the run, is you just schedule the run for another time to prove that you have the requisite fitness. Dr. Haynes said that Evan told him he did not bother to reschedule the fitness test. Let me drink some water. Evan didn't reschedule. Consequently, Evan is declared not fit. I can only go on what I've been told. And some of you have been saying to me for a while, when are you going to do an Evan Lewis cuss out video? You've done a Shimron Hetmeyer one. You've done an Andre Russell one. You've done a Roston Chase one. Da, 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 da. When are you going to do an Evan one? And Evan, I hope you're listening to this. Evan, what's the story, bro? Evan, what's the story? Because you see that story that Dr. Haynes said in the press conference today? That story's mad. That story is over mad. Because when I, when, I, when I took time to pause and fully understand what Dr. Haynes was saying, if I take that at face value, what Dr. Haynes is therefore saying is, you couldn't bother to re retake the test. No, Evan, that can't be right. Because if you couldn't bother to retake the test, that means you knew that that would make you ineligible for selection, which means you don't care about selection. I'm just adding up the story, man. I'm just adding up the mass. On the surface level, that's what one and one is telling me. One and one equals two. I hope and I pray that there's some more to this story. And I hope that there's, not that I hope, but maybe there's a falling out or maybe Evan feels he's being disrespected in some shape or form. It can't be as simplistic as Evan should have reset the test, reset, reran the test. He didn't re, re uh, and it can't just be that he didn't want to rerun re re it, knowing that that would basically remove him from West Indies selection. If that's true, that would mean Evan didn't want to be selected. Evan, bro, ball's in your court. You don't have to explain yourself, but the ball's in your court. Because right about now, that's the story that's out there. The story's looking kind of sticky. It's, it's looking kind of techy. It's kind of looking like you don't want to play for the West Indies right about now. I beg you, come and... I beg you, come and clarify the story. Come on the Caribbean Cricket Podcast and tell the people them what the real story is, because that's what it's looking like right now. So those of you who are listening to this going, where is Evan Lewis? He's not in the T20 squad and he's not in the ODI squad because evidently he ain't done what he needs to do fitness wise to make himself available for selection. Boy, oh boy. I saw it go. So. That's the T20 squad, people. And a lot of what I've just said kind of applies to the ODI squad. So this is the ODI squad. Names announced. Remember, the ODIs are after the three T20s. As selected, Puran, captain. Shea Hope, vice captain. Brooks, Carty, Akil, Alzari, Brandon, Kyle. Gudakesh Moti is back in it. Kimo Paul, Anderson Phillip. Uh, oh, sorry, Rodman Powell, Jaden Seals, and the reserve is Romario Shepard. Now, remember, the last time we were involved in um, ODIs was against Pakistan, sorry, the Netherlands. Remember, that was a tour that Caribbean Cricket Podcast went to, did all the content from, and then we went straight to Pakistan. Uh, so the players who are not involved from that Pakistan tour who seemingly have been dropped, Nkrumah Bonner is out. 
In fact, did he even play in any games? I don't think Bonner got a game versus Pakistan. Obviously, he did versus the Netherlands. He travelled to Pakistan, so Bonner out. I think Bonner was sick, actually, so that's why he didn't play in some of the games. Anyways, what was I saying? Bonner out, Sherman Lewis out, which is a bit harsh on Sherman. He played one game in the Netherlands and then didn't get a look in. Um, he didn't get a look in versus Pakistan. So Bonner is out, Sherman Lewis is out. Romario Shepard played versus Pakistan. He is now a reserve, and I think that's fully deserved. I'll explain why in a second. And Hayden Walsh Jr., who went to Pakistan, he's also out. So let me say that again. So Bonner out. Lewis out, Sherman Lewis. Uh, who else? Who else did I say? Hayden Walsh out, and who was the other one? Oh, and Romario Shepard is a reserve. So who's come in for those players who are out? Um, so the players who've come in. Let me just look at my list. Oh, sorry, actually, Jaden Seals out as well. Jaden Seals also played in those. Um, no, sorry, no, no, no. Am I got the right? Sorry, sorry. Ignore me. Jaden Seals is in. So um, who's come in? Multi has come in, I think, as a light for light, not light for light, but a spin replacement for Hayden Walsh. And Kimo Paul, who kind who had kind of gone to Pakistan as a reserve, has basically swapped places with Romario Shepard. So Kimo Paul is now in, and Romario Shepard is now a reserve uh, for the ODI squad, which again, I've got no real problem. I've got no real problem with that call. I thought I thought Romario Shepard was poor, very poor, in fact, with the ball versus Pakistan. So it makes total sense to me why Romario Shepard would then um, no longer be considered a first choice in the side. The squad looks a bit light, though. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Ah, I think it's one player short. Did I count that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ah, there's only 14 in the squad. Technically, 13 plus a reserve. That's why the squad, that's why it doesn't marry up with how many are out. So, like, I've not said who's replaced Bonner or who's played. So, it's, there, there's, there's at least one person short there, if not two. Okay. So, it's a small squad. Um, have I got any issues with Multi coming in for Walsh? No. I don't know how Multi got dropped anyways uh, in our last ODI series before Netherlands and Pakistan. Was that India? That was India as well. Um, I'm not sure how Multi has gone from being in the squad, then out of the squad, then back into the squad when he barely got any games. So no problem with Multi getting a go. Santoki said to me that he reckons Multi's in because some of the games are in Guyana. Whatever. I don't care. Multi's in the squad. That's fine. Paul for Shepard. No problem with that. Like I just said a few minutes ago, I thought Shepard was awful with the ball versus Pakistan. He couldn't be trusted to bowl his allocation of overs. Kimo came in for that one. Kimo travelled as reserve, played the last game got two wickets for 50, 57 runs in his nine overs in that last game. Like I say, Desmond Haynes is very high, spoke very highly of Kimo Paul in the press conference. So I, so I get that change. The big issue, though, really and truly, as I look at that squad, is the batting. Um, we were found out, not not so much against Pakistan. No, because we there were even points in the games versus the Netherlands. Remember, there was that one ODI versus the Netherlands where we were like 99 for five at one point, And obviously, we still won. But... We, we came on stuck first in the Netherlands and uh, Dr. Haynes spoke about this in the press conference. He was like, I am still concerned. He raised two main points. One, West Indies mindset in ODI is still not being a 300 ball match mindset and still having too much. We're still kind of caught between a rock and a hard place of having a bit of a T20 mindset to ODI cricket rather than having a bit of a, um, for want of a better word, a phrase, phrasing, a, a rotation mindset. We're still getting a bit stuck in the middle overs versus spin. We're still shot, shot. Some will say shot selection. Some, some will say shot execution. But we're still giving too many wickets away at crucial moments in ODIs when it's still time to build an innings. Puran was guilty of that several times. Um even Carl Mayers at the top, obviously they moved Carl Mayers to open um, in, in Pakistan. And at times he got us off to a good start strike rate wise. But then I think, and um, Dr. Haynes alluded to this in the press conference, that is that is that the best use of Carl Mayers though at the top of the innings? Uh, he seemed to be alluding that he'd rather see, not that it's his choice per se, um, but he, I think he was alluding to rather wanting to see Brooks at the top of the order. Um, and have a more solid start to the innings 
rather than hoping that Carl Mayers gets off. Maybe you do that with Carl Mayers in T20s, ODIs. There's an argument to say you don't do it with Carl Mayers in ODIs. Remember, versus the Netherlands, Brandon King was moved down to number five. But then Pakistan, he got unstuck, particularly to spin uh, in Pakistan. And by the third game, he, he was he dropped or was he sick? I don't know, but he didn't play the third game. So there are still some question marks about our batting. Um, if I read back the figures of that Pakistan tour, Shea Hope averaged 50. Obviously, he got, uh, he got a 127 in the first game. Brooks averaged 43. He got 150. Akil Hussain averaged 41. He got a 50. And then from there, it was downhill. No one showed up with the pat. Puran only averaged 19. Rovman averaged 17. Carl averaged 14. Brandon averaged 2. So there are still question marks about the structure of our batting lineup, but also the, I think it's more shot selection. I think it's more shot selection than shot execution, but shot selection in the context of gain situation. So maybe I'm more talking about situational awareness. And I still worry about our top six in that ODI. I'm not saying I'm going to tell you what the top six should be right now, but I just wonder about their ability. And, and Desmond, like I say, Desmond said it in the press conference, their ability to play 300 balls and recognizing this isn't a T20, bed yourself in. And what, and what Desmond also alluded to is, Bed yourself in so that when the six hitters come in, whether that be, who am I looking at now? Oh, it's Ramara Shepard's out. So whether that be, oh, I've got to pick someone, Rovman Powell coming in at number six in ODIs. When Rovman Powell comes in at number six, if it is number six that he comes in for us in ODIs, or even Akil was saying, or whatever it might be, players who you know can clear the boundary, um, let them come in when there's less than 10 overs to go or 12 overs to go when their six hitting can be more effective. If you're bringing in your power hitters and you're already four wickets down by 20 overs, of course, we're not going to make many runs because you're putting them in, you're putting them in situations where you're asking them to do rescue acts when their game not is, isn't necessarily built for that. So there's issues about our, the order we're putting the players in. Should it be Brooks and Hope who open, for example, instead of Mayers? Should Mayers come in at number six or seven three? So there's there's issues about the order. There's issues about shot shot selection, and there's issues about situational awareness at the top level. We got away with it versus Pakistan, and we started some building blocks at the top level versus Pakistan. We got found out a bit, but that was to be expected. And it's also worth noting that Desmond spoke a lot about people needing to appreciate and understand how difficult it was for the players in Pakistan. Forty six degree heat. Um, Lots of players, he said, got sick. Um, Bonner, I know, got sick, for example. That's why I'm questioning if King got sick because he didn't play the final ODI. Um, he said lots of players got sick. And he said, actually, the team unity was a real pleasure to see in Pakistan. And that was something that Puran spoke about at the end of the series and got some cussing from it. People are like, why is a guy talking about the importance of building a family and being a tight unit and growing together. And people are like, nah, we just lost three nil man's talking about how it was such a good tour to build a family. And I th at the time I thought this is harsh. I get what Puran's talking about. We're coming from, we are, we are le again, let me phrase, re remind people. We are one of the worst ODI teams in world cricket in terms of like what's allegedly the top tier of world cricket. We are one of the worst. And in fact, for this ODI series versus pa Bangladesh, we aren't favourites. That's how bad we are. I mean, Bangladesh are a good ODI side, but that's how bad we are that we shouldn't be considering ourselves favourites for this ODI series versus Bangladesh. So people shouldn't be expecting this squad to go from zero to heroes when we've never been good well, for a very long time um, in ODIs. That's why when I was out in the Netherlands, that's why I celebrated the 3-0. Because to me, it was like, this is how you start getting better. You've got to build small blocks, beat teams like the Netherlands first and beat them 3-0, learn your lessons and take that as the next step to the next challenge. Of course, we took the 3-0 licks from Pakistan, but it's about what did we learn? Um... Which players show that they belonged? Who do we need to drop from here? What are the issues? And each one's a building step. So now we have the challenge of Bangladesh at home. Um, and let's see what we learn learn from that. So that's my kind of synopsis of where we're at with the ODI side. I haven't really spoken about the bowlers. I don't think we need to as much. I mean, Alzari's a banker. Akil Hussain's a banker. We'll see how Moti goes if he gets a play. 
Anderson Phillip, I've got no problem with him getting a play. Could be a bit expensive. Jaden Seals, no problem with him getting a play. Chemo's back in the side. So that, depending on if they play another spin, they obviously got Carl Mayers as well. So I'm not as concerned with the bowling. I don't think we need to two, two, two deep dive into that. Um, it's more about the batting for me and how we construct the side um, with the bat. So that's my synopsis of the the white ball sides, people. Get in the comments below. Let me know what you think about that. If you think I missed a key talking point, if you'd like to know what Desmond said about someone who I may or may not have mentioned, if you think there's someone in the T20 squad who should have been in the ODI squad or vice versa, uh, and so on and so forth. So get in the comments. Let me know. Make sure you press the like button. Make sure you press the subscribe button um and share it with your people share it with your people and let's keep making the caribbean cricket podcast grow even stronger and bigger i've been mashal st patrick hewitt let me take this off the screen i've been mashal st patrick hewitt that's been another caribbean cricket podcast reaction vid thank you and good night we rule the cricket world now the rules Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans.